Hey, hey Instagram, how's it going? My name is Ashley Drennan and it's Wednesday, which means it's time for a studio update from my studio here in London. Um, this will be my last studio update for a little while because I'm gonna be taking my maternity break. It's coming up soon. Um, so I'm gonna just share with you the last two large paintings that I've now finished. I'm really pleased with them, so I'm gonna chat through them. All current available work, once photographed, will be up on my website and I'll be posting about it on my Instagram so you'll be able to see it um, in full. I do fully appreciate that sometimes <laughs> it's a little bit hard to get a full view of the paintings because I very much use my studio walls as I'm working and it can be maybe a bit messy but I know loads of you love to see that aspect of it as well. So that shows the real authentic side of making and um, what a typical artist studio is like well a painter's studio anyways and i tend to be not very clean and clinical with my studio my studio walls very much become part of the making and i like i like that dynamic i love my studio i love including it in the work so we're going to start first with this green painting um if you've been following me for a while you'll remember that in january i had made this paint study that I really liked. I wasn't sure what direction it was going to take me in, but it's ended up really informing this large painting. Um, and that's the, the whole process of how I start is with paint, uh, small, smaller paintings generally on paper where I start to work out ideas and plans and um, see how far I can push things. So in this one, I really, um, I really wanted to, to test my own boundaries and my sort of comfort zones. So I've completely changed the format of, format of how I normally approach a painting. For the last like two years or so, I've been working from the middle out, whereas now I wanted it to be more um, horizontal. I wanted to play with the rock formations from a different viewpoint. Um, so really changing the shape around. I wanted to include more of this pushing in and out from the background and see how I could use that further. And through use of masking tape, masking tape is like a very typical technique that I use. Um, I've got these lovely, hard, strong lines in contrast to some of these underpainted lines. Um, and then I reached a point where it was becoming a little too, um, ugh, like a little too, um, there wasn't enough conviction about it or there was no dynamic about it. And I had put in some of this really bright uh, oil bar. Best thing ever, like an adult crayon, I love it. Um, I had put some in some like highlights with the oil bar, but they were just a bit safe. They were a little bit careful. So I decided to just really go for it, really mess it up and like tested out some marks on the wall and transferred them here. So all these little knotting points have brought like a real sense of, of life and movement and this sort of a dynamism about the painting. Um, and as a viewer of the work, you know, you're gonna spot this bright, bright oil bar first, but the eye then has to move in and out through the layers of painting because there is a lot of layers on this, but it's quite subtle. And for me, I mean, through years of studying art and going to exhibitions, um, and museums and so forth like the sign of like a really like good painting or like a painting that really satisfies me is a painting where each time I go back and look at it I see something different like just a little something extra and I think there's a lot of that happening in this painting which means for me it's a successful painting and then on the other side of my studio wall we have this lovely blue it's really nice warm gray stone blue so last week I had shared um, that I had this painting from last year early last year really liked it and wanted to transfer some of the marks that were in it let me give you a better view um, so if you can see there's a lot of dry brushing marks here um, which is literally like a dry brush loaded with paint but it means that you're dragging and sort of tracing out all these natural marks like of, of the pigment with the paint. Um, and I wanted to play with that a bit more. I also wanted to play with 
this overlapping of using two tones of the oil, oil bar. So that was my starting point. I had got to a point with this painting where um, I was really pleased with like the, the tones that I was using and the, oh, the marks that I was making. And uh, sometimes when you're making a painting, you're so pleased with sort of the mid stage of it and you don't want to ruin it. And you're afraid if, if like you progress, you're going to lose the, the, that nice sense of where you've got to with the painting and you just, yeah, you might just screw it up. Happens to me, I have to really <laughs> think, right, come on, let's just go with it. We need to get this done. We need to get this finished. So what I did was, again, I went in with the masking tape, um, but I really blurred where the harder lines of the masking tape are showing so like here and here i've like dry brushed it over with a loaded paintbrush so again it's that sense of um push and pull for the viewer like you're you're pushing you're you're looking through the layers of paint and you kind of have to figure out how each mark was made and i've continued that in this block down here and then i finished with the bright orange overlapped with the red oil bar because um, I was using that finish up there from this painting and I wanted to replicate it but the most interesting thing for me about this painting is again you have to let like your eye roam around it like you're going to see these bright marks first because naturally our eye is drawn to that but all these bright uh, oil bar marks are actually replicating these under layers of painting that some of them are so faint and you have to go back in to kind of figure them out and see how, how they, they sort of hold their own within the painting. Because the painting is made up of all these marks. And each time you go in, there's just a little subtle difference in something else that you see. So again, that's why I, for me, this is a, a successful painting. They don't all come out successful, <laughs> but these two have just gone in the right direction. And I left them to the end of these uh, making these four large paintings because I had struggled with them a little bit starting to get that fear of like finishing the painting which I know sounds a bit ridiculous but you know this is it like you just you have to push through and sometimes they really work and sometimes they don't and that's the nature of um, creativity and making paintings you know purely from like a very organic point of view like I don't use photographs I don't use photoshop or anything like that so sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. This time they have worked, so that's pretty good. So I'm just gonna give you an overview of the four finished paintings. I had talked a lot last week about the yellow ones. So they're just drying on my studio wall. And once photographed, these will be available from my website. Ooh, love this yellow coming through, which is good. It's so satisfying to see these paintings finished. Thanks as always for tuning in and for watching. Um, I've been doing the live studio updates for about a year and a half. Now I started doing these during the pandemic and the response has been brilliant. And uh, yeah, continued support from you guys has just been, yeah, fantastic. So thank you. And I'll be in and out of the studio, so I'll be intermittently um, posting and sharing and all the rest of it. And yeah, I'll be back doing these again post <laughs> post baby arrival. <laughs> How mad! Have a great week. Thank you.